A few years ago, back in 2009, I did a video showing how to move WordPress uh, to a different server and different web address. Uh, and I used that procedure for a while and it seemed to work most of the time. Sometimes I seemed to get strange results, missing items uh, such as text widgets and things like that. Uh, and then I soon learned that the reason that I was missing those text widgets is because of an issue in the WordPress database where WordPress stores some of its data as serialized data, uh, which means that the process that I demonstrate in the video here of dumping the database, opening it up in a text editor, and doing a search and replace on the web address, that 95% of the time that's fine, but what happens is when you change the web address in data that's serialized, if the URL turns out to be a different character length, the new URL is a different character length from the old URL, which it probably will be, then that was a problem and that data that's serialized uh, wouldn't show uh, in the text widgets. So what I had to do quite often in those moves is just go in and recreate the text widgets. Usually that wasn't a big deal, but it was annoying. And then later I started seeing some other issues on some blog moves uh, that used some uh, plugins that had serialized data in the database. So it started getting more and more problematic. Uh, so as I looked into it doing some research uh, on the web, uh, I found a, a PHP script that another person has provided uh, that provides an, a different way to do a search and replace on the, those URLs that will change the URLs and will unserialize and reserialize the data so that it's all uh, working properly. So anyway, I won't go into length about the issues with serialized data and all of that. If you want to know about it, uh, you can do a Google search on serialized data in WordPress and you'll find everything you need to know. But I'm going to make a short video here to show you the new process that I've been using for a couple years now. Uh, I've been meaning to do this for a while, but just haven't gotten around to it. Uh, so to do that, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I have another blog here on EduChalk that's really small. I would use my main blog here, but it's pretty large. The WP Contents folder is about half a gig, and the database is rather large as well. Uh, so just in the interest of time, I have another blog on here that doesn't have a whole lot in it. If I just do uh, WP Themes, it's a small blog, a small database, so it'll just make it easy for me to download and transfer quick uh, for me to demo. But uh, if you can do it on a small blog, you can do it on a large one as well. Same process. So anyhow, what we'll do is we'll take this edutalk.org WP Themes blog, and I'm going to move it to heraldleader.org slash WP Themes. Uh, the first thing I'll need to do is to download my blog and my database uh, for this WP Themes. So I'm going to demonstrate this using cPanel. So I'll log into my cPanel account. Uh, here I'll go to File Manager and if you're using FTP you can FTP the files down of course but everything that I have here is in a directory this blog is installed in a subdirectory WP Themes so I'm going to download my blog here WP Themes now all I really need to download is the WP Content directory but there's really not that much more to download in the entire blog code uh, as the, w the WP Content so I'm just going to download the entire thing uh, so to do that, I'm going to compress it, uh, make a zip file or a tar file out of it. just makes it easier to download, and it's a lot faster than uh, FTPing. So I've zipped it, I'll select it, and download it to my computer. Once the download's complete, then I'll delete the zip. Uh, you want to make sure you do that. Don't leave it sitting in your directory uh, or someone can come and download the zip. Uh, and then they have all the information they need to hack into your site because your database uh, username, password, and connection information is in that uh, zip file. So make sure you delete that off your site if you have it uh, zipped up in uh, public HTML. Uh, so I have my blog downloaded uh, that I want to move. Next thing I need to do is get the database for the blog. So we'll go to PHP My Admin. Uh, we'll find that database and we're going to export it select all tables, make sure it's an SQL file, save as a file, and go. Once it's done, that way I have everything that I need from my existing site, uh, and now I just need to move it over then to my new site. So I'll log into the control panel on my heraldleader.org site. 
go to my file manager, public HTML directory. I don't have anything on this site currently except for this one sort of index page. Uh, so I'm going to upload my zipped file, WP Themes Tar. Once it's uploaded, I'll come back, reload the page. There it is. I'll select it and extract it. We're going to extract it in public HTML. And there it is in that directory. Now again, I'm going to delete that zip. I don't want to leave it setting in public HTML. Now if I look in there, there's my entire uh, blog source code. Transfer it over. WordPress source code transferred. So now I need to upload my database. Uh, so I'll go back to cPanel. And uh, I can use an existing database or create a new one. I don't have an existing database here, so let's create one. Uh, we'll call this uh, themes, create the database. There's the database created. Now we need a user. We'll make it themes as well, just to make it simple. We'll generate a password, copy that to the clipboard and use it, create that user. So now we have a user themes and a database themes, so I need to add that user to the database and give that user all privileges on the database. So now we have everything created that we need. We have a database called this, we have a user with the same name, and then that user has the password that I copied out and the user has all privileges. So everything should work fine on the database end. Uh, so now let's go to PHP My Admin and we'll find our themes database. It's empty. And then we'll import our SQL that we dumped. So there's the database tables imported. Now the other thing to look at here if you do this is notice that the collation for all of my tables is UTF-8 general but my database created as Latin 1 Swedish. Uh, so at this point here I want to go in operations and actually change the collation of my database to be UTF-8 general as well. Now let me just say here I'm doing this because the actual database that I dumped over on the original site was the UTF-8 general collation. Uh, you can't just go into an existing blog database and look at these collations and just go in and just uh, change them at will like that. Uh, you can, but you'll cause yourself problems if you do. If you go into an existing blog and just try to click and change the collations, it's not that simple. Uh, so don't take this to mean that uh, you can just go into your existing blog and change what the way that I did here. Again, I only did that because I know that was the correlation of the database I dumped from. So everything is the same here as it was that I dumped from my other database. Now, uh, what I need to do is go back to my file manager, go into my blog, open the config file, edit it, and change the connection details here. So I'm going to put the new database password in for the password for the database user it is that and for the database name is the same and here everything else should be the same I don't have the keys in here but you really should have those on your blog uh, so if you don't have those uh, uh, keys in just go to the site here and get you some to put in there let me just show you that to start with if you have them in you can use them or you might want to take this opportunity to update them uh, never hurts so go here grab the keys and then come down here and put them in your config file. This will just help your blog security if you have those in. The table prefix, I had a custom pre prefix and it's still going to be the same prefix. Okay, So save changes. Now I should have everything so that I can go to my heroleader.org and go to WP Themes and see my blog. And there it is. Uh, now the problem at this point though is that if I hover over anything, if you notice here, if you look here over heroleader.org, if I click on about, notice it goes to EduChalk because it still has the old web address in the database. Okay, so that's the issue. So what we need to do now is to change all of the instances of that old web address in the database to our new web address, which is heroleader.org. Uh, and since my old website is still up, uh, you know, it's easy for me to click on links here and assume that everything's working fine. But when I clicked on that link, what it really did was redirected me to my old site uh, and to the contact page on that, or to the about page on that old site. 
So we've got to get all of the web addresses in the database changed uh, to our new address. And that's where the previous problem uh, was happening because what I demonstrated to do in the past was before we imported that SQL dump was to open it in a text editor and do a search and replace. Again, that worked 95% of the time, but it caused problems with the text widgets and so forth because of the serialized data. Uh, so the way that I'm recommending that you do it now is to use a script uh, to do that right in the uh, in the blog. And here's how you go about doing that. You can go to my site, educhalk.org, where this video is embedded in a post, and click a link to download the script that we're going to use to do the search and replace. Or uh, you can go directly to the website here. Uh, you see the URL here and download the script. I'm just linking to this download uh, page from my website. Uh, when you get it downloaded, then what we want to do with that script is upload it into the blog directory in cPanel. So we're going to go into our WP Themes blog in the root directory and we're going to upload that script that we downloaded. And it's called search and replace db.php once it's uploaded, make sure that it's in your root directory. You see it there. Uh, and then we're going to use that to do the search and replace. So we simply go to our web address slash search replace db.php to, uh, to do the search and replace. So let's do that. We'll go to uh, it's heraldleader.org WP themes. I made a mistake. Search replace because it's in the blog and you'll see this page and what it does is it automatically detects the old URL. Uh, the old URL was educhalk.org WP themes. It picks that up from the WP options table and then it asks what you want to replace it with. Well, in our case we want to replace this with this address and then click search and replace. It asks you are you really sure? Yes. And then it'll go through and it will show you uh, everywhere where it's gone and made changes. Now, even on a small blog like the one I'm doing here, where I really only have one post on the blog, it changed 19 instances of that address. And if you look here, here's the, um, an example of the serialized data. This S59, that's the serialized part. That's the part that caused the problems. Uh, and what that essentially means is that this web address here, uh, heraldleader.org WP themes is 59 characters long. Well, on the other blog, it wouldn't have, it would have been a different length. And so the S would have been S55 or whatever the other length was. So if you use the search and replace through a text editor, it will go through and it will search and replace the URL, but it doesn't change the number here for the serialized data. And that's what causes the problems. Uh, this script here, I've used it. It seems to work exceptionally well, uh, and it will allow you to go through and change the web addresses and change the uh, serialized value as well. Now, it's really important after you finish running the script that you go back into your directory and you delete that script. If you leave it loaded in your blog, then it's a huge security problem. Once you've updated it, then click on delete uh, and delete that script out there. Now, when we click on our links, we should see the web address. And everything should work fine. Now don't be fooled. I mean, you could go in on your blog and just go into your options table and change the two values of your home URL and your blog URL and get maybe 80 or 90 percent of your blog working. Uh, but changing those two values doesn't change the, all of the URLs in the database. Again, on this small blog, it changed, what was it, 19 or so URLs. If I run this on my main blog, that's a significantly larger site. And when I do the search and replace on that, it actually changes thousands of URLs. So it's important to change those URLs, uh, but doing it with this script is a much better process than doing the search and replace using a text editor like I show in the previous videos.